Happy Monday night. Thank you for joining us this hour. We begin tonight with the biggest story in American politics right now, at which everyone seems to be swinging and missing. It starts with the man whose campaign for office this year is so brazenly nuts that I believe he may be a performance art project about how brazenly nuts campaigns can be these days. He is the Republican Party's nominee for governor of the great state of New York. We must stop pandering to the pornographers and the perverts who seek to target our children and destroy their lives. I didn't march in a gay parade, parade this year, a gay pride parade this year. My opponent did. And that's not the, that, the example that we should be showing our children, and certainly not in our schools. I just think my children and your children would be much better off and much more successful <clears throat> getting married and raising a family. And I don't want them to be brainwashed into thinking that homosexuality is an equally valid or successful option. It isn't. Who knew you could say pervert like that when it was a noun? The perverts. That almost makes it sound like sort of an R&B band. Anyway, uh, that was, of course, Carl Palladino, the Republican candidate for governor of New York State, a man currently raising children with both his wife and with his mistress. Carl Palladino weighing in on what he sees as the valid and successful options for American family life. It started with that very awkward, very strangely pronounced speech this weekend. Then he went on all the morning TV shows today to double down. Mr. Cuomo took his daughters to a gay pride parade. Is that normal? Would you do it? Would you take your children to a gay pride parade? I think that you can probably expose your children to a lot of different things and really? help them no. decide and make their own decisions. I don't think decisions. it's proper to, uh, for them to go there and watch a couple of grown men grind against each other. I don't think that's proper. I think it's disgusting. I don't know if you've ever been to one, but but they, they, they wear these little uh, uh, speedos and they, and they grind against each other, and it's just a terrible thing. It wasn't pretty was a bunch of very extreme type people in bikini type outfits grinding at each other and doing these gyrations. Says the man raising children with both his wife and his mistress. As long as we're talking gyrations and what disgusts Carl Palladino, recall that Carl Palladino was the one as recently as uh, April of this year who distributed videos of humans having sex not just with each other, but also with farm animals. Also where there was the super racist stuff about black people being like monkeys and the president and first lady of the United States being a pimp and a prostitute. Now Carl Palladino wants us to know what it is that he thinks is disgusting. The reaction to this story essentially has been, oh, that crazy Carl Palladino, there he goes again. Gee, this Carl guy sure is a wacky candidate. Now, Carl Palladino is undoubtedly a wacky candidate, but this is not a crazy Carl Palladino story. This is a culture war story. This is a how Republicans are running for office this year story. Would that it were just crazy Carl. Christine O'Donnell, Republican Senate candidate in the state of Delaware, made her name as a national conservative activist by crusading publicly against gay people and gay rights. Her organization did press conferences in Washington, D.C., promoting the idea that homosexuality can be cured through the power of Jesus through taking part in religious boot camps. She toured the nation promoting the idea that homosexuality can be cured by boot camps. When President Clinton nominated an openly gay man to be his ambassador to Luxembourg, Christine O'Donnell helped lead the charge on the right against him by spreading made-up charges that he had ties to pedophiles. Earlier this year, Christine O'Donnell benefited from a whisper campaign that her primary opponent, Republican Congressman Mike Castle, was secretly gay. Here's how she responded to that rumor, which was being peddled by people associated with her campaign. I think that that's a very tacky approach. I never said that Mike Castle was gay. I don't endorse putting out rumors that Mike Castle is gay. I definitely am not just going to keep saying Mike Castle is gay. Did somebody say something about Mike Castle being gay? Does anybody want to ask me about the whole Mike Castle is gay thing? Did you say Mike Castle is gay? Did you say that Mike Castle gay? Is that what you said? Gay, gay, gay? Is that what? 
Christine O'Donnell and Carl Palladino stand alongside Sharon Engel as well this year, the Republican nominee for Senate in Nevada. In seeking the endorsement of something called the Government is Not God PAC, Ms. Engel assured the PAC that she is opposed to gay marriage, she is opposed to gay people being allowed to adopt children. Then the group asked this, quote, Intel Corporation supports equal rights for gays and offers benefits to partners of homosexual employees. Would you refuse funds from this corporate PAC? As you can see there, uh, Sharon Engel checked yes to that question. See, it's not enough to be against gay rights. You must reject money from anyone who isn't against gay rights, which kind of makes me want to sign my name on every dollar bill I can. Sharon Engel and Christine O'Donnell have both benefited from the financial largesse of Republican Senator Jim DeMint of South Carolina. Mr. DeMint's political operation has provided some of the muscle for their campaigns. Senator DeMint stands alongside Christine O'Donnell and Sharon Engel and Carl Palladino in defining this year's Republican Party stance on gay rights. If a person is a practicing uh, homosexual, they should not be teaching our schools. That was Jim DeMint back in 2004. He brought that view up again and repeated it earlier this month during something called the Greater Freedom Rally in South Carolina. In the great state of Montana, the state Republican Party has a party platform that seeks to make homosexuality illegal. You know, like in Iran. Under the crime section of the party platform, they state, quote, We support the clear will of the people of Montana expressed by legislation to keep homosexual acts illegal. Do the crime, do the time. Again, th th this is not a wacky, do you believe that guy, Carl, Carl Palladino problem. This is the Republican Party this year. The Republican candidate for governor in the state of Minnesota is a man named Tom Emmer. Tom Emmer was the subject of a nationwide boycott earlier this year after it was revealed that he donated money to something called the You Can Run But You Cannot Hide Ministry. Meet You Can Run But You Cannot Hide Ministry. Muslims are calling for the execution of homosexuals in America. They themselves are upholding the laws that are even in the Bible for the Judeo-Christian God, but they seem to be more moral than even the American Christians do because these people are livid about enforcing their laws. They know homosexuality is an abomination. If America won't enforce the laws, God will raise up a foreign enemy to do just that. That's what you're seeing today in America. You can run, but you cannot hide ministry. After being challenged about giving financial support to those charming folks, uh, Minnesota's Republican candidate for governor, Tom Emmer, explained that he gave the ministry money because he said, quote, they're nice people which is a very special interpretation of Minnesota nice. Last week, you may recall that we interviewed Art Robinson, a Republican congressional candidate from the great state of Oregon. Art Robinson has argued in the past that AIDS is not a real disease. AIDS is just what you get for being gay. He has argued that the government created a fake AIDS crisis to explain deaths caused by, quote, exposure to homosexual behavior. It's not just crazy Carl. It's not just a Carl Palladino problem. One of the laziest of all the Beltway media narratives about the elections this year is that the conservative resurgence isn't about social issues. It's vaguely libertarian-ish. The culture war is over, that's what they say. But the culture warriors are not only real, they are waging that culture war right now. Now, not everybody in the Republican Party is waging that war with them, but who is stopping them from doing it? And who's responsible for the casualties of that war that they're waging? Joining us now is Republican strategist Mark McKinnon, who has advised the campaigns of John McCain and George W. Bush. He is vice chairman of the public relations group Public Strategies. He's also a contributor to The Daily Beast, where he recently wrote a column titled The GOP's Gay Fiasco. Mark McKinnon, I have missed you. Thank you for coming back on the show. Hey, thanks for having me back, Rachel. So the Republican Party is going back to the days of Jesse Helms with some of these <laughs> candidates this, this year. What happened? Well, uh, Carl Paldino is such a throwback. He makes Archie Bunker look like Howard Dean. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and but I, I do want to point out that there are lots of Republicans being led by people like Ted Olson, who's a former Solicitor General, who argued the uh, Supreme Court case on the uh, on the recount for President Bush. Uh, is is uh, the lawyer for the case, the gay marriage case in California, to repeal it uh, and, and to make it the law of the land? So, uh, and I was at a fundraiser last week where a lot of leading Republicans were there with him. So. 
there are lots of Republicans out there who understand that 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 this is a fundamental right, and, it, and if we're going to defend the Constitution, we say we're the party of the Constitution, we have to stand up for gay rights. It's the right thing to do. Uh, on its face, but also politically it's, it's in our best interest because the tide of history is sweeping forward. Gay marriage will be the law of the land. Don't ask, don't tell will be repealed. And we can either get on a, you know, get on a surfboard and go with the wave or, or get drowned by it. Uh, but my advice to the Republican Party is do the right thing, get right on this issue, or, or we're going to be doomed to minority status forever. This is, I, this, I'm so glad that you were able to come on the show and talk about this tonight, Mark, because I feel like there is this fascinating contradiction. People like you, um, like Steve Schmidt, like uh, Cindy and Meghan McCain, like George Bush's daughters in some cases, like Ted Olson, like Ken Melman, like a, a lot of people, a lot of people who are powerful, both either just as public figures or who have a lot of power to wield within the Republican Party, are out as moderates on 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 gay rights issues. And I think that sort of manages the upside. It makes it okay for people to not be so anti-gay. But what in Republican politics manages the downside? What are the negative consequences in the party for being super anti-gay, like a Jim DeMint or a Sharon Engel? Well, I think the negative consequences will be losing. And, and I think that, uh, you know, that Republican candidates who may have won primaries are likely to lose general elections for adopting these, these, kind of, these, pol these views, which are prehistoric. Uh, you know, I think they may cater to a very narrow slice of a of a of a ideological uh, sector of the of the party primaries, but they don't appeal to the vast middle of America, many of whom are Republicans. It sends the wrong signal and is problematic for the brand of the Republican Party. And so, I think it's important that Republicans. Uh, across the board stand up and voice their opposition to these kind of views and make clear that it doesn't stand for the Republican Party. It's not the majority view of the party. It's a minority view and, it's, and it may be a short-term strategy to win primaries but it's a, it's a bad long-term strategy for the party. What would that look like in the, in the nuts and bolts sense? I mean, should the RNC um, make a statement against candidates who have super anti-gay views or say very, an, uh, very homophobic things? Should state parties do that? Should, uh, should leading candidates say that? I mean, Jim DeMint isn't up for re-election this year, but he's not losing anything. He's getting more and more powerful. And he's got among the most anti-gay positions that I've ever heard a public official voice in my lifetime. He does. I, listen, I, I think we should have it in the, in the Republican Party platform. I think it should be in the state platforms. Uh, I, I just think it is such a throwback to the past and, and it's such, such a denial of the obvious uh, of where we're headed and what the right thing to do is. And, and uh, so, I like, as I said, I think it's the right thing to do politically, but I think it should be in our platform, uh, broadly speaking. And I think that we should be penalizing uh, candidates who, who adopt this sort of view. But, Rachel, politics is a market, and the market's not going to respond until these people get penalized, and they get penalized by voters in the voting booth. And, and so my point of view is Republicans need to come out in and, and, and primaries and make sure that these people don't get elected to represent us because, A, they're either likely to lose, which would be a good thing, or, they're, or the worst thing might be that they get elected and drag our party in the wrong direction. Former George W. Bush advisor Mark McKinnon, contributor uh, to The Daily Beast and always a really welcome guest here on this show. Mark, thanks, as always, for your time. Carry on regardless, Rachel. <laughs> Thank you.